for the older man out there, before you approach a woman and ask her for a number, try to ask her for her social media first. All my most of my communications are done on Instagram now. Are the rules still the same where well, you wait more than a day to hit them up on IG? Do you follow them immediately? Well, I don't have any insecurities as far as like if I meet you and I like your picture right there. I don't have those insecurities. When I have a conversation with someone before I ask them for their IG, they are more likely to give me their phone number when I ask for it with the IG. Mm -hmm. But then if I just approach them and say, hey, listen, I just want to link up with you. Can I get your IG? Mm -hmm. At that point, that's all it is. Being a gentleman never goes yeah, out of style. It never goes out of style. I don't just care. try it out. <laughs> You know, just be yourself, says. be comfortable enough with yourself to say, hey, you know what, it's okay for me to open a door for a woman. Hey guys, it's your girl, Erin the Renegade, and we are here tonight with Eight at the Table Presents One-on-Ones, and I'm here tonight with my guest. Jamal, pleased to meet you. How you guys doing? Um, today we're going to have an interesting topic for you. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Y'all heard his accent, he said Jamal. <laughs> <laughs> say it one more time for the people. Jamal, that's my name. It's so sexy the way you said it. Jamal? Yeah. I'm so sorry, but that's that's just the way it is. That's what y'all got. It's my name is <laughs> French. So today we're going to have an interesting topic. Aaron, you and I, um, we were um, backstage here previous, and we were talking about dating in this era, but for older folks who are not used to the apps like Instagram, for example. How Tinder. Does, Tinder, Instagram. How does one go from the old school way of dating and to doing it now. Yeah, well, okay, I think we should start off like this. What was like, let's say 15 years ago, like what was your methods of like meeting a woman? Uh, for an older man, it was like, you know, you met a woman, you approached her, your heart was, you know, pumping out of your chest <laughs> and, you know, you had a conversation and the next step was, can I get your number? Mm -hmm. And when you got the number, you obviously couldn't wait to call this woman back, right? Because a woman wouldn't just walk up to a guy and be like, hey, can I get your number? Yeah, obviously you had unicorns out there that did it. But mostly it was the man's duty to do that, mm -hmm. right? And so you, that, there were steps to take and it was a pattern to follow. And it's no different today, right? There are patterns that you mm -hmm. follow today also to get you to, the, to first base. And so... Um, when I was coming up again, it's like, you know, you approached a woman, you had a conversation, you got the phone number, couldn't wait to call, set up the date, set up the second date, and then maybe you got someone the third. <laughs> but um, now the dynamic has changed. Please tell us. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and so now the interesting thing is before, and this is for the older man out there, before you approach a woman and ask her for a number, try to ask her for her social media first. And I think that that's the key. A lot of men don't follow that pattern. And it's a new pattern. It's a new way of doing something. Because even for myself, the way I communicate now is more on IG than anything else. So even more than text message or phone calls? More than calls. text messages, more than phone calls. All my Most of my communications are done on Instagram now. Even with women who are closer to your age? Absolutely. Wow. Friends women that I've So everybody. Seen, everyone. It's my number one platform for communication. But it took a while for me to make that transition, mm -hmm. right? And it's kind of like those new technologies that you tell yourself you can do without, but you can't. Yeah. I, I was very resistant to IG. Really? Yeah. I just felt like I had a lot going on. I didn't, I wasn't on Facebook. I just didn't want like something extra sucking up my time, you know, and it has definitely become a tool for me at this point. So I, I appreciate it, yeah. but I wasn't sold on it initially at all. Yeah, I wasn't also, and particularly when Facebook acquired it, because for me it was like a privacy thing. Yeah. But it was one of those things, again, despite those issues that I had with like privacy and all of that, I looked at it and I said, well, this is a tool that I can use, mm -hmm. right? Because I, I didn't have a Facebook account since 2008. And so it goes yeah. to show you how far gone I am I from that. Know from the social media world, but Instagram is a different tool in itself. And it's not a sponsorship for Instagram. I want to be clear about that. But it is also, um, the, it is the only tool that I use, right, it's to communicate nowadays. And I find it to be um, very helpful. And I think that, you know, a lot of men of my age should start to understand that when you meet a woman, this is, this is the first go-to. 
So, so how does it work? You meet a woman, you ask her for her Instagram, like, yo, my name is Jean Mach. Um, can I get your Instagram? And I say, oh, my Instagram is Aaron the Renegade. So, like, are the rules still the same where well, you wait more than a day to hit them up on IG? Do you follow them immediately? Well, I don't have any insecurities as far as, like, if I meet you and I like your picture right there. I don't have those insecurities. I don't think I'm, you know, I'm that guy who has those insecurities. And I feel that a lot of people feel that they there's certain things that they cannot do me if i like your picture i'm just gonna like it right, right. because you like it <laughs> yeah because i like it it's not i'm not stalking you i mean obviously if i approach you and i have a conversation with you wherever we meet whether it's a restaurant a bar a concert wherever we meet if i approach you and you do give me your ig obviously i'm going to like your images if i see something in there i'm not going to go through the whole catalog yeah. and just start liking things but once in a while i'm going to double back and especially after we have more conversations right so so what's the evolution so you ask for the ig you communicate on you know dm or whatever back and forth at some point, do you, like, exchange phone numbers? Like, how long until you set up a date? I'm, I'm actually glad you asked that because what I found out, and I've tested this and it's proof positive, is that what I found out is that when I have a conversation with someone before I ask them for their IG, they are more likely to give me their phone number when I ask for it with the IG. Mm -hmm. But then if I just approach them and say, hey, listen, I just want to link up with you. Can I get your IG? Mm -hmm. At that point, that's all it is. But I think oh. that the, 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 the <clears throat> thing to get out of this is that you need to be personal, right? right? Okay. With the person. And proactive. Yeah, and proactive. You can't just walk up to someone and say, yo, let me get your IG and then think that they're going to give you the number. No, you still got to you know, be personal. Find out about this person a little bit more and then ask for these things so along what a, with it. I'm sorry, go ahead. Nah, and I was going to make the point to that is that when people see that you're genuine when you ask for it, most of the time they, they'll they actually DM you their phone number. Phone number anyway. Anyway. Gotcha. Yeah. So what about like, is, so it, is the actual like act and, uh, you know, dance of dating, is that different you know so you get the ig the number this any other like no it's not planning a date like the types of dates is is that different you know for somebody who's ne who's not necessarily of this generation no i mean the the pattern is still the same right it's it's real realistically you just got to find out what this person wants right and give it to them right mm -hmm. because that's the trade-off right and so i don't think that that part of it doesn't does it doesn't change because gotcha. you know we're we're creatures of habits. That's that's who we are. So you know it's either you're going to go to a restaurant, a movie, if that even still exists. I can't remember the last time I went to the movies, but um, <laughs> At the you house. know. <laughs> <laughs> so so you know, and, and and I guess that's a thing to look at too. There are different things in our society now that society has changed so much, and so I guess the planning would be a little bit more something that maybe we're not used to because mm -hmm. back then it's like oh you meet someone it's a dinner in a movie right or it's mm -hmm. just a dinner but now it's a little bit more where you have to really find out what is this person interested in mm -hmm. but because you have their social media it's easy to find if out. you do your homework it's easier to find out well okay this person likes this you can tell if they like arts Mm -hmm. Right. So instead of doing dinner in a movie, maybe you do dinner and you go to an art show, you know, or maybe you bring it to a comedy show. Mm -hmm. And so there are there are different ways of doing it because and it's a lot easier, of course, because you have their social media. You know exactly. I mean, you're on IG. Yeah, that's the cheat code. That is the cheat code. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely makes it easier. So do you find that... Um, women are generally more receptive with, you know, you asking for their DM, hitting them up on DM versus you just like meeting somebody in the grocery store um, or the, you know, at a stadium or. No, I think that it all depends, right? Because if I meet you in the grocery store and we have a vibe and we exchange information, mm -hmm. I think that believe it or not, I believe personally that that one is more realistic. And I'm going to tell you they, why. Because you're in a random place. Right. You weren't looking for that. And so that person is inviting you into their world instantly. Gotcha. Whereas if I go out, I'm expecting to meet someone. And there's a difference there, right? Mm -hmm. Because I get done up. Women get done up. Everybody gets dressed up. We're out. We're looking for the action. We're looking for the juice, right? And so I think that that's, that's an invitation to, to like, hey, you know what? Come into my world. 
I'm available. I want to have a little bit more with you. If I meet you in a in a supermarket, for me, that's a win. Oh, that, that's that's a win. Oh, that's that's a win. <laughs> <laughs> that's a win because it's easy, right? Because yeah, again, that person is at their leisure and they're saying, "Yo, hey, it's okay." Mm-hmm. So, what about this? And you know, I'm sure you've seen this clip. Uh, let's say if you go on a date and you know, a woman is like, "You know what?" She's like, oh, "She's like, I'm cool with you picking me up." You know, you're not a serial killer. Um, okay. My question is, are you going to her door to ring her bell, greet her, and, you know, then y'all be off on y'all own? I know where you're going with this. Chivalry is not dead with me. That's all I want to know. <laughs> you feel me, ladies? It ain't dead. Chivalry is not dead. It may be dormant, but it's not dead. Dormant, not dead. Okay. Yeah. I, it, I may be, like... it may be shallow and at a low level right now, but it's not dead. Um, there's just certain things that I couldn't do personally. I think that, um, I think that, me personally, I would still walk up to her door, you know, and I will still open up the door for her. I've done it. And again, I don't have these insecurities. So I am who I am and I'm comfortable with that. So I will continue to do these things. Chivalry will never be dead with me. Do you think that's just more so um, a generational gap? Um, you know, just what, what is it? It's just something we did and our parents taught us versus something that these kids are doing or these younger folks are doing, you know, and that's what their parents taught them? Um, I, I, wouldn't, I don't want to say that it's the parents' fault. No, really. Yeah, I wouldn't want to say that. I think that, um, I think that society has gotten so busy that people yeah. can't really focus much on, they can only focus on so much, right? And... I don't think that chivalry is something that you just pick up. I always find that weird that the waiter would come to the man first, mm -hmm. right? Sitting at a restaurant. And I would always point them to the ladies first. To, for her to order first? Yeah. And it's like, hey, because I, you know, it's, I'm not going to, I'm not going to take that position. Mm -hmm. I, I do believe that, you know, in certain things, ladies are first. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. See, I mean, personally, I just think it's a generational thing. You think so? It, it is, you know. Uh, I feel like I do certain things because my mom is of a certain age and that's what she taught me. I understand that. You know, and those particular things still jive with who I am and I, I've accepted them as, you know, being okay for me to do as I, you know, move yeah. along in my life, you know. Yeah. I think that, you know, and I always say it's a regional thing, but like, <laughs> you know, I think like, Men in the South probably are a bit more chivalrous. Okay. You know, just like older men are probably a bit more chivalrous. Yeah. You know, than than younger men. So I I, I think it's um. It's definitely learned. And and I agree with you. It's it's, it's hella dormant, but it, but it, hopefully it's not dead. No, it's definitely not dead. And like I said, it's something that if it's ingrained in you, you don't even realize you're doing that you're it. doing it right. You know, it's just you're just acting on what you've always. Which you've always done, yeah. Yeah, and so it becomes second nature to you. So for me, I know, and I remember when I saw that clip and I was just like, mm. <laughs> I'm not getting out of the car to open your door or to meet you at the door or to ring your doorbell when you could just walk downstairs. <laughs> I love you, Rico. <laughs> <laughs> you my man, but... You going to the door. Um, oh, I'm definitely, I'm not, yeah, I'm definitely going to the door still. You know, like, even, like, for instance, like, I was out, my, my cousin got married this past weekend, and so me, my cousins, my brother, my mom, my husband, we all went to Vegas for the wedding, you know, and even just being around my brother, my brother is shivers towards me. Yeah. You know, my brother's going to open my door. He's going to, you know, if we're, we, like, we got, we were on a charter bus going to the, like, the, the venue or whatever, if my husband's behind me and my brother's in front of me, my brother's gonna put his hand out to make sure that I'm I'm able to walk down the steps or something yeah, like absolutely. that, you know. So I think it's not even just like a, a a a romantic relationship type thing. It's just relationships between men and women. Period. Yeah, I think it's, it, it becomes second nature because I have you know I have sisters and it's the exact same thing. The way the way they get treated, it's like you know, hey, you're first. Mm -hmm. You know, and there's nothing wrong with that. And, you know, obviously we live in a time where that's changing. You know, that's It's changing. Mm -hmm. But um, the one thing I would tell the younger man is that, listen, try it out. Being a gentleman never goes yeah. out of style. It never goes out of style. I don't Just care. Try it out. 
You know, just be yourself, be comfortable enough with yourself to say, hey, you know what, it's okay for me to open a door for a woman. There's nothing wrong with that, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that where we lost that is that we want men and women to be so equal, Mm -hmm. right? And we live in a society where we want men and women to be so equal in everything. Mm -hmm. And me, I don't want that world. I agree. I want a world where a woman is is still a mystery to me, where the little things I can please her with is like, Mm -hmm. you know, I can give myself a pat in the back and say, yeah, I figured it out. I know exactly what it is. The thing to me that I find that exists now is that because of the way social media is, is that it has taken the mystery of dating, right? Has taken the mystery of finding out about someone. It's kind of like if you think about gold, if everyone could find gold, then gold would be worthless. Mm -hmm. Diamonds as well, right? And I think that what younger men are dealing with is that they think that going to the door doesn't benefit them, right? But I think that if they understood that the value in that, Mm -hmm. then I think that it'd be good. But the problem on the other side of that is that the women don't expect it, Mm -hmm. right? Or, 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 Or they don't demand it. And they don't demand it. But I think that if they tried it, they would understand the value in it mm-hmm. and how precious that is. Because the fact that the women don't demand it, if they got it, it would be like, oh, wow. You exactly. Came to my door? Exactly. Like that to me would be like, oh. And it, as hard as it may be, you just got to, you know, kind of like swallow your, your pride and try it. Mm-hmm. Try it out and see and see the value in it because I think that you know we 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 look at someone's social media and we think we know everything about them. Right. Right. It's easy for me to 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 DM someone or text them, but I've heard a conversation with two people the other day that talked about just writing a note and sending it to someone, and people are finding pleasure in that these days, which is really weird, right? I and I thought that. about it, but you know what happened? I actually got a note from someone. And it blew me back. Really? Yeah. And I was just like, wait a minute. This person actually, it's a handwritten letter. Mm-hmm. And I was like, wait a minute. This person actually took their time and wrote this by hand. What do you think I did with that letter? Kept it. I framed or, it. Oh, oh, Jesus Christ. Because it's so <laughs> unusual. Yeah. Right? It's I, so unusual to get a written hand letter from someone that I framed it. And that's what I'm talking about. It's precious because it's so unusual now. Mm-hmm. And chivalry is the same thing. I, it's not perfect dead. analogy. It's dormant, but very precious. Mm-hmm. I was, um, you know, and this is something I've always done. Like I'm, I'm I communicate like better in writing. Ew. Oh yeah, okay. like way better in writing. Um, you know, just I, th- I think writing it lets you kind of. Th- think clearly, you can, you know, all all the emotions are removed, you know, um, and I've just always been better at that. And so sometimes when I feel like I'm not able to communicate what I need to like get across to my husband, I'll write a letter. Oh, wow. Handwritten. That is interesting. Yeah. And I I didn't know that. And I was just talking about a... a, Exactly. A handwritten note. Birthday cards, um, whenever we have birthdays or whatever, he always like writes paragraphs to me in birthday cards. I do the same thing. Like it's something that we've actually been doing for a while. I don't I don't know why, to be honest. But I I guess we probably appreciate like the manual labor that's involved with, you know, actually sending somebody a, a, a written letter or written whatever versus a text message or yeah. an email or whatever. But I mean I think it, it shows that you you deeply or invested invested into this person mm-hmm. right and to me at least that's what it says it's that because if you're going to sit there and you're going to write cuz i know when i'm writing the first thing i'm concerned about is is my handwriting yeah, looking good like, enough you yeah. know it's not so much sometimes just the message is this letter going to be you know yeah. if this note is going to be conveyed the right way mm-hmm. you know and so i i definitely agree with that that's that's pretty cool well congrats on that <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's just something we've just always done for, you know, okay. and, and again, I think it's, that's part of me, you know, because sometimes when when, we're, when you argue or you got to beef with your spouse, you just, you want to get out what you want to get out, okay. but sometimes you just can't do it in the moment, and so you need time to kind of just, you know. Dial it in. 
Exactly. Cool down, think through it, get the emotions out of it, and really just like, you know, think clearly about what the issues are and how do you solve it versus having an argument or being right or, you know what I mean? Okay. And a lot of times in marriage, that's well, what let me, happens. Let me, let me ask you a question, which is interesting because you say you both do it. Uh huh. How, how did that start? Is this just a natural thing or did um, one did it and the other felt like they could follow? Cause that just, Honestly, that's... I don't know. I think... I'm going to assume that I started it okay. just because I know that's something that I've always done. You know, if I give somebody a card, mm -hmm. like for their birthday, I'll typically write two paragraphs in it. Mm. Yeah. Not um, just the uh, congratulations on no, happy birthday. In that case, I can just, I, <laughs> if it's a wedding gift, like if I go to a wedding and I got like a, a $200 check or something, I'd be like, congratulations from Aaron and Darren. I put the check in a piece of paper, give it to all of them and be done. <laughs> You know, like, is, is it... Yeah, absolutely. That's just, you know, that that's pointless, in my opinion. But, you know, like, if it's, if it's someone's birthday or, like, a note to your mom or your dad, you know, I, I think it, it's, it's always nice to, like, celebrate people, to show appreciation. And I think that's just something I've probably kind of always done. Okay. And, but, you know, the, the, the letters, that was just kind of an, an outlet for me to just, like, you know, release things. It's very difficult for me to do to write. it myself. Yeah, no, nah, it's, yeah, it's just not who I am personally. But, oh. you know, maybe I should give it a try. You know, and I, you know, I'm going to tell you what I used I to do. I believe in it, but it's not something that I've practiced. I'm going to tell you is... what I used to do. Like, if I was hot about something, like, I would literally write. I remember one time I got into it real bad with, like, my mom or my dad. And I wrote, I think my, my dad, actually, and I wrote a letter and I just tore it up. It's like I just needed to get it off. <laughs> and be done with it, you know. What would you call that? It's called a catharsis. It's oh, just that's a what it is. Okay. it's just a release, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well you know it's, it's thank you for sharing it's that. It's just a form of therapy. Uh, absolutely. Hey everybody has their the way of their way of doing it. Me I, I just stay away from everything that is common to me. I just that's the only time I need space, actually. Mm -hmm. I'm not a person for space, but when I feel like I need space, I just lock it. up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just like I don't even answer my phone calls. Oh, wow. Yeah. And a lot of times people are like, I've been looking for you. And I'm just like, I know. So as the rest of the world. I was saying, exactly. <laughs> you and everybody else. <laughs> and it's something that I think we all need. Right. And so that's actually a good thing to talk about also is that when you're dating someone mm -hmm. and you're finding out about them, you have to know when they need that space. It's yeah. something that I had a hard time with. Why? Why do you think you had a hard time with that? Because, um, I always looked at space as negative, as negative. Like, it's not so much that you don't like me kind of thing, but it's kind of like you still have your job. You're not taking space from that. You still have your friends. You're not taking space from that. And I always felt like the only thing you're taking space from is the relationship, Damn, which point. to me was like, I'm taking space from you because your friends, you still have them. Your dog, you still have them. You're not taking space from your dog. You're not taking space from your job. You know, if a person came to me and they said, if I was dating someone and they said to me, hey, listen, I need space, and they went on vacation, and they took their <laughs> vacation time, I'll be like, this is a person that absolutely needs space. But I felt like anytime you're in a relationship and someone needs space, they need space from you. Mm -hmm. And I had a hard time with that. But you're probably the stressor. Mm. So that's why they need... Mm -mm. No? No. Mm -mm. Because that's a because I thought that, mm -hmm. and that's why I can clearly say no. That's not that's not the case. It's like they were dealing with other things in their lives, and I guess maybe I was too abrasive. I don't know. You probably just added fire to the flame. Like probably. they they were probably already having issues at work, and then you got to come home and have issues. And it's yeah. like one thing you truly can't walk away from because bills got to be paid. Yeah, well. You know? So I can I I I, I can see. But that. I had a hard time dealing with it. So now it's like if I'm in a relationship and someone asks for space, I'm like, all right, cool. You know, you got it. That's fair. I, I think that's fair enough. You know, you got it. But um, it was something that I had. You know, it was a it was a difficult it was a difficult thing. But I think that if you understand the person, then you actually do it. Right. No, I agree. Yo. I'm not going to lie, like, this is actually a really good conversation. <laughs> a really good we conversation. Could go on, we could go on for a little bit more. Yeah, because I mean, I, I'm, I'm really, you know, because I was talking to the other guest, and I was just so kind of shocked by, like, the whole, 
What's that? The, the whole dating situation, like in this time, and that's oh, what she had brought up before. Yeah, about the, I, I was hearing that segment you did with, with the her. apps and with the, the apps and the all likes that. and yeah. all that. But, but the thing is, I was like, you knew that. I saw, I saw your face. I was like, you knew it. But I'm like, so what is it like as an older person? But like I said, I'm, but content? again, right? So and I made and I made and I'm not gonna be that person that's gonna be like, oh, I always knew that. But I started to pick up on it on because that, yeah. That, yeah. So what started to happen is that lately I've been getting a lot of like. And what gave it away weren't the new people. It was the people that I was currently dating or seeing. Mm -hmm. And we had a situation where I was just like, you know what, you're on the back burner right now. And this person started liking images that I had on there forever. But you had my Instagram for like the last five months. Why are you liking these images sudden, now? Yeah. You're just flagging me and telling me, hey, I'm still here. Because you thought I forgot about you. Yeah. And so when that happened, I realized that, wait a minute. This person just got on my Instagram and they're liking every image. It's a science. But the way they do it, <laughs> the way they do it is interesting. They'll like an image and they'll pause. And then they'll wait to see your reaction, see if you start following them, mm -hmm. see if you start liking their images. You don't do anything. They'll hit another image and then they'll wait. They'll hit the third one. And then now you start interacting with them and they're like, they go down the list. And that's what I found out because I tested this and I'm like, yo, why is this happening like this? So when they first hit the first image, second image, third image, I would not even reply. By the third image, I'll go on their gram now and I'll look at it and then I'll start liking their images. And now I'm telling them, okay, I see you. I acknowledge you, mm -hmm. you know, and then the dialogue can start. And so it's really interesting, but you can't just rush into it. Mm -hmm. You got to kind of like, again, you have to find a formula that works for yourself into it. You know, if you're dating and if you're looking for someone to date and you're out there, just kind of find a formula that works for you. For me, it works this way. Mm -hmm. Is that like I said, they'll, they'll hit one image and I'm like, okay, I acknowledge you, but I don't acknowledge you. Second image, same thing. But by the third image, I'm like, okay, let me give this person a little bit more wind. And then we start conversation. What if you don't care for them or you just uh, don't I mean, respond? Well, I mean, it's, um, it, and people's Instagram can tell you a lot about them. Okay. Right away, you could know if this person is like, you know, too... Too volatile. Okay. Or like aggressive, like going. Yeah, you can you. tell. Okay. You can tell if that's some that person is aggressive or if they're just passive. Gotcha. Right? You can tell right away. Depending on the quotes that they put on there, and especially the ones with the quotes when they put on on there, I know right away. <laughs> I start reading them and I'm like, okay, I got you. You know what's going on in their life. I know what's going on <laughs> in, in their that life. Time and yeah, place. because no, because they're what they're doing with that is they're flagging other people. Yeah. Because they don't want to outrightly talk to that person. Mm -hmm. So they're flagging that yeah. person, right? And I'm not dealing with a person like that. Like if you're flagging other people this way, you're gonna flag me that way, and I'm not the person that's gonna have that conversation with you. No, I agree totally. You know, I don't have the time for it. You know, I yeah. feel that because we had this conversation, it was about, it was me and Lonnie, we had that that segment that talked about open communication. Mm -hmm. And I'm a firm believer in that, you know. I think that, you know, it doesn't, it's not a end all be all to your relationship. It's not, it's not going to save your relationship, but not communicating at all. It can would kill it. Definitely kill it. It can kill it. Yeah. You know, so I, I, I'm a firm believer in, you know, open communication. So mm -hmm. you have something to say to me, say it to me. That's just me now. And again, I wasn't I wasn't that person in the beginning. I, I mean, that shows growth. I I, I mean, yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah, I appreciate that. I wasn't that person. I wasn't that person that you could just walk up and say, "Hey, here's what you did." And and it's not that I took it personally. It was just like, what? Mm -hmm. And it's like I'm finding this out about myself. And sometimes that's a hard thing, right? Yep, hard pill to swallow. It's a hard pill to swallow. It's like, wait a minute, I did that. Yeah, I, I don't remember that. You know, and so. You know, it's it, again, it's part of growth, but now I really want that. I mm -hmm. really want the open communication. I really want you to just be like, hey, here's what you did, and let me handle it. Gotcha. Right? And because, again, in that segment, what I had talked about, I think, if I'm not mistaken, is I'm not here to manage people's emotions. Just your own. Yeah. And so, and that's another thing. If you're dating out there, don't try to manage someone's emotions. Let them be who they are, find out who they are, and deal with them accordingly. I had a woman that I was dating. And she kept telling me all the time, you have to accept me for who I am. You have to accept me for who I am. And eventually, one day, I never forgot this, right? I got up and I said, you know what? I can't be with you because I'm accepting for you for who you are. Shock of her life, though. She didn't think that that was coming. Mm -hmm. You know, but I think that um, we we owe ourselves and that person that responsibility. Yeah. Of just being like, hey, you know what? We're not compatible. 
You're not bad. You're not horrible. We just don't it's make not it. not for me. And that's all it is. You know, we can't, we can't take it personally. We but but people do. Personally. You know, yeah, we do. do. Absolutely. <laughs> Such is life. Such is life. But anyway, that yeah. great conversation. No, absolutely. It was a pleasure speaking with you. Love um, it. Yeah, absolutely. Y'all, yeah. make sure y'all, first of all, make sure you follow. Well, are we giving out our Instagrams on here? Uh, of course right. I'm on Instagram. I'm make on Make sure IG. y'all follow Jean Malk. Yeah. Jean Malk. Um, you're going to find the description <laughs> in the links below. Follow us on YouTube, guys. Follow us on Instagram, TikTok, everything. Please subscribe, like, support the show. This is a private funded show. And so your subscriptions, your likes, your donations, your purchases of our merch really, really helps us to continue to create content that you appreciate. And also we wanna hear in the, com in the comments what topics you want to hear about. Absolutely. Surprise us, please. If there's something that we haven't spoken of, let us know about it. So we can put that show together specifically for you. Absolutely. Couldn't have said it better. Cheers. <laughs> and it was a pleasure. <laughs>